we have to, before we look at tax incentives, we have to look at the variables of tax planning, right? Okay, okay, that's great. We call them the variables or maxims of tax planning or the principles that make tax planning possible. What are these principles? They are four main principles, right? So we have what we call the, the time variable, okay? Let's just start, let me use late. Okay, sister kids, why late, okay? So we have the locational incentives, or the locational variable, which tells us that, okay, where should you locate your business to enjoy tax benefits? Two, we have what we call the activity variable, right? What sort of business activities can you go into which has the least tax exposure? Three, we have what we call the time variable, right? Considering the time, vari the time value of money, remember one CD today is worth more than one CD tomorrow. It means that when we consider tax costs into the future, they will be lower, right? Com compared to when they are today. So it is better to defer tax costs into the future to mitigate the present value effect. That is it. So this one has to do with shifting taxes into the future. Okay, so shifting taxes into the future, right? And then we finally look at what the entity variable. When the entity variable is telling us, that, okay, what kind of entity should I go with that has a minimal tax exposure? Right. So sometimes we call it the jurisdiction variable, meaning that you look at the tax jurisdiction that has the lowest tax. So we can even consider the use of tax havens here. Right. Which country can I send my or defer my taxes to, which has a low or no tax? I get them. So entity variable is so much. So we look at whether we look at domestic entities. Should we go with a sole proprietor? Should we go with a partnership? Should we go with what? A limited liability company. Should we go with what? A trust a charity, whatever, right? And also we can look at it from establishing physical presence from a physical, uh, another country, whether we should come as a, establish a subsidiary or we should come and establish what a branch in a country, right? All these things are ways or the entity variable of tax planning. Look at, looking at the kind of entity that has the lowest tax rate, okay? So these are the variables of tax planning. Now these variables, there are many aspects of it, right? So first of all, let's talk about the locational incentive. Now, for the locational variable, it is telling us that what, what particular location should we cite our business that has the lowest tax effect? Now, in Ghana, for me, I categorize location incentives or locational variable into four, right? So I categorize the locational variables into four. And what are these four? The first one I talk about is for manufacturing companies, right? Under the first shadow. So for manufacturing companies in Ghana, there's a rule for manufacturing companies. So manufacturing companies have locational incentive, right? Then two, we have what? Post-concession location incentive, right? Post-concession location incentives for, for farming and agro-processing businesses, okay? So businesses that process finished and semi-finished uh, agricultural product into finished and semi-finished product and cocoa byproduct businesses, right? These ones, after their tax holidays or tax concessions end, they have some locational incentives if they locate their business in some parts of Ghana, they get some incentives. And also for young entrepreneurs, right? The act considers a young entre entrepreneur as somebody who is less than 35 years of age, right? These people also have some locational incentives that they enjoy under our tax law, okay? Then finally, we have free zones, right? Remember, free zones is what? A location outside custom territory, right? Remember, a location outside customs territory. So this one, I also consider it was, as what? As a location, right? So for me, this is how I categorize locational variables under our tax law. Four, and we are going to look at all the locational variables, right? And then we'll look at how to also apply them when it comes to questions. Please put them down and let's look at them one after the other. So activity variable. Activity variable means that you're looking at the nature or character, okay, or type of business that you have to enter into, which has the low tax benefit. So here, we consider some kind of businesses because of the nature of their business, we get reduced tax rates, right? So there are some businesses that if you go into them, automatically they give you some reduced tax rates. 
also there are some businesses when you go into them you get tax concessions which is reduced tax rates as well or tax holidays i get in a period where you pay low or no taxes also so these are some of them okay, that you get and some 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 of them too because of the nature of your business you can carry forward losses right okay you can carry forward losses because of the kind of business that you go into and you get some special incentives too okay so these are the ones that are very important when it comes to the locational variable the activity variable and when it comes to the entity variable you are looking at entity choices what kind of entity should you go for are you going for a sole proprietor sole proprietorship okay are you going for a partnership are you going for a company right these are the rules that you have to look at then if you are looking at establishing physical presence in a country, are you going for a branch or are you going for a subsidiary, which is still a normal Ghanaian company? Okay, so these are the issues we are going to discuss regarding tax incentives. Kindly put them down. Let me get some water. I'll be with you shortly. I hope that's okay. Are you putting it down? Are you putting them down? Yes, please. Yeah. I'm putting them down. Mm -hmm. Can we go? The entity, please. The entity. So, proprietorship, partnership, company. Anybody with a question for me, for me, for me, for me, for me. Anybody with yeah, a question? Yes, boss. Yes, I was, I was struggling to understand why you put physical here, you brought subsidiary, which could also be a company. So I was wondering. I'm saying that when foreign companies want to also establish in Ghana, that is how they go. The physical. Oh, okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Are we okay? Are we okay? Sir, please, the sole proprietorship, partnership, please, the third one is what? Company. Under the entity choice. Yeah, company. The third, the third company. Oh. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Oh. So I told you manufacturing companies have some what? Some incentives under our law, right? Is that not what we said? Is that not what we said? Yeah, I didn't get a question. Yes. Is that not what we said? 
the manufacturing companies yes, yes, yes. some locational incentives under our law. So we are first, I'm trying to print strategic tax planning, but it's still loading. Yeah. So let's see. Let's go to the first schedule of our income tax act. The very first schedule. Where is it? I hope you can all see my screen. Yes. The first schedule. Okay, so look at manufacturing companies. It says what? Uh, that's paragraph, uh, the paragraph six, right? Of the first schedule. It says what? The chargeable income of a company for a year of assessment from a manufacturing business. Are you getting it? Other than a manufacturing business located in Accra on Tema, it's taxed at the rates indicated below. So it means that if you are not in Accra and Tema, manufacturing businesses located in regional capitals of the country, okay, you pay 75% at the rate of income tax, not so. And the ones that are what located elsewhere in the country, you pay 50% of the tax. What does that mean? It means that if you are located in Accra and Tema, you pay the normal tax that every company pays. Okay. But if you are located in regional capitals, you pay 75% of the original tax, which is the 25. And when you are located elsewhere in the country, you pay what? You pay 50% of the tax. Okay. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Yes. So it means that, let's say that this is ABC group, right? And they want to come and establish a factory, a manufacturing facility in Ghana. This is what they have. They plan to set up in Tema, okay? Or Kumase, okay? Or Ponongo. Okay, and then this is their estimated, this is the estimated revenue that they plan. Okay, they plan to estimate three, let's say 30 million. We are working in thousands of so 30 million revenue, right? So 30 million, or let's say 300 million worth of revenue, right? That's the estimated way. That's what they plan to put together. And the estimated production costs. Okay, this guy have, Estimated production cost of 100 million, not so, which means it will be the same across wherever they want to establish. Now they are stuck between these options, right? So included in the estimated production cost, right? Estimated production cost is um, depreciation, right? They estimate depreciation to be. 40, 40,000, right? And then they are going to buy the manufacturing plant, going to acquire manufacturing plant, no matter where they go, right? They will acquire manufacturing plant of 400,000 cities, right? This is what they have. And they are telling us to maybe compute the tax, the expected tax liability, right? Expected tax liability of the company, right? Dependent on the suitable, most suitable location. Okay, so we have to look at the most suitable location there, where this guy is to shoot his factory. And we said, what is the rule? And anytime they tell you to compute, you have to still explain them. You have to tell us the underlying assumptions behind your computation. Are we okay? So this guy coming to Ghana, where do you think is the suitable location? Where do you think is a suitable location? Mm -hmm. have to establish liability, right? So they acquired a manufacturing plant, true or false? And for manufacturing plant, won't it be subject to capital allowance? Won't it be subject to capital allowance? Yeah. So yes, it will. Plus two assets, yes. plus two assets. So will be subject to thirty percent capital allowance. So manufacturing plant. So what is the cost? It will be four hundred thousand. Also, 
400,000. So capital allowance would be what? That would be 30% of this. And that's how much? 3, 4. That's 120,000 also. Do you have got the capital allowance down. Now, let's establish the tax liability of the company. If it is situated in Tema, if it is situated in what? Umase, and if it is situated in what? Konongonoso. Okay, so let's see. This is where they want to establish their manufacturing facility. Okay, so what's the expected revenue? Now, if we like, we can just get a profit. So what's the expected profit that they expect to make? Based on the question, what will be the expected profit? What was the expected profit? 200. 200. So we can start from there, 200, 200,000. So we can start from there. That's their profit before tax. Expected profit before tax. So expected profit before tax would be 200, no matter where they locate, right? True or false? But they said included in the cost was what? Depreciation. True or false? So what do we do? Yes. We add back the expected depreciation. How we much? Add back. 40, 40,000. So in that case, it was millions. So we have what? 40 million will be added across not so if you like you can even do one only one then because the people are the same right then you change the percentages so that means what's our adjusted profits to 40,000 throughout not so 240,000 now we less capital allowance how much capital allowance was charged we computed the capital allowance, right? 120,000. So. 120. So it's become 120 throughout. In that case, what's our chargeable income? It's still 120, right? Yes. Yes. 120,000. So. Now, the tax payable, because the first one is in Tema, right? Tax payable. Tema, how much tax would he pay? 25%. Tema will pay 25%, right? So Tema will be 120, 25% of the 120,000. And that will be how much? 30,000. Tema does not gain any rebate, right? But Kumase is a regional capital, right? So it being a regional capital means that in Kumase, we are going to pay 75% of the original tax rate, which is 75% of the 25, which means that we are going to pay 18.75%. Do you all agree? Right. On yeah. on pay yes. percent of the 25, meaning we will end up paying 12.5%, right? Are you getting it? So, 12.5% yes. of 128. Kumasi, we pay what? 18.75, sorry. So, 18.75 would be how much? Of the 120,000. 22.500. 6.7. 22.500. 22.500. Okay, then Konongo. Konongo is not a regional capital, no so. So that is what 12.5 percent of the 120,000. How much will we end up paying? Half of it, right? 15,000. So let's calculate the tax savings. So if we decide to choose which is the better option, Konongo, right? So Konongo over Konongo over Tema, what's the tax saving? So if we choose Konongo over te Tema, we are saving how much? We are saving 15,000 also. If we, Konongo, if we choose Konongo over Kumase, how much are we saving? Into five. 
So overall, Konongo is better than also because of the location, right? The location provided under the law. I hope everybody is okay. So apart from we citing, are you getting it? So what is the explanation or the comment, right? We say what? In accordance with what? In accordance with the first shadow, right? The first shadow of the Act 896, not so. Manufacturing companies, not so. Manufacturing companies enjoy the following I get to tax rebates when they locate in the following areas, right? So you say, except Accra and Tema, or except Accra and Tema, or something, right? So you just have to say something. I'm just guiding you that you don't just do question raw without explaining, as shown above, right? So you can say what? Um, Tema and Accra, no rebate, right? They get no rebate and they pay 25% tax. Uh, regional capitals, not so. Regional capitals, how much? They get 25% rebate, not so. Meaning that they pay 75% of the tax. 75%. Meaning they will end up paying 18.75%, not so. And other areas outside regional capitals, right? Which is elsewhere. These guys are going to pay what? I'm going to get 50% discount. Rebate means a discount on your tax rate, right? So they are going to pay 50% of the 25, which is 12.5%. Are we okay? So that is it. Please, are we okay? So we are saying that, okay, this one is good, but is it because of tax alone that you are going to situate in another place? Is it because of only tax that you consider when you're going to situate your business? No. No. What if the place no. doesn't drink water? What if the roads are bad? What if the competition is high? What if you do not get access to your market, right? So we have non-tax factors that we also consider when we want to situate our business, right? So one, we can consider proximity to labor. That place we are going to situate, I guess, is it close to our market? Is it close to our labor? So proximity to labor. Is it close to raw materials? I get to access to raw materials. Can we get raw materials when we go and locate ourselves there? What is the condition of living there? Okay, condition of living. Have you considered the climate condition and weather condition there? Okay. Have you considered competition? Okay, do you have access to good roads? Good roads, social amenities, okay? All these things must be considered. Are you getting it? Your standard of living, we consider all these things. You don't just say, oh, Konongo is good, so let me just move to Konongo, where your target market cannot be found. You run at a loss. You cannot even save tax. Do you understand? So most of the time, if you have to take a decision regarding... Um, the particular tax incentive, okay, regarding whether you should locate your business, always consider the non-tax factors too. I hope that is okay. Are we okay with locational incentive for manufacturing companies? Are we okay? I hope anywhere you see... Sabi, we're right, you know. Yeah, all right. We're right, so please... Okay. Yes, uh, yes, uh, uh, that's okay.
this are either now. Yeah, we are done. Okay. So what is the next step? Where are we going to now? We've seen manufacturing. Where is the next one? The next That's one. That's the post concession location. Concession. Yep. Location incentive, right? Yes, now this one exists for companies which enjoy tax holidays. Now, this is for the next five years, okay? This one only exists for the next five years after the tax holiday expires, right? After the tax holiday what? expires. So if after your tax holiday expires, for the next five years, you situate yourself around these areas, right? So your location and the tax rate. So if you have enjoyed a tax holiday and after the tax holiday, you find yourself in Tema or Accra, you are going to pay tax at 20%, okay? If you find yourself in a regional capital, regional capital outside the northern savanna, right? The northern area or the northern savanna, you are going to pay 15% tax. You find yourself elsewhere outside the regional capital, but outside the three northern regions, which is the northern savanna, you pay 10%. And in the three northern regions or the northern savanna, okay, you pay 5%. So these rules, every time you're answering questions, you need to remember. So for companies that enjoy locational incentive. Mostly this one, the post-concession locational incentive, I told you it applies to three types of entities, right? Those that are in agriculture. Okay, this one goes with those who are in agriculture, one. Those who are in agro-processing. And those who are in what? Cocoa byproduct business. Okay. But note, when it comes to agro-processing, it also looks like manufacturing. So if you're an agro-processing company and you take manufacturing incentives, you cannot enjoy this one. If you are taking this one, you cannot enjoy manufacturing incentive, right? So please keep that in mind. So this is, when you locate outside, uh, or when you locate, relocate to these areas, or you're relocated to these areas, after the concession period, these are the rates which you are going to apply. Is everyone okay? Are you putting them down? The same way to consider non-tax factors, right? You do not just situate your business at some place just because of the tax benefit. You must also consider other issues. Are we okay? Hello, Bill. Yes, boss. Please, the third point, which is 10%, which, which location is that? Elsewhere, elsewhere. Elsewhere, okay. In, uh, elsewhere, outside the... Uh, Regional capital. I think it's the pen. Shall we proceed? Is it outside northern sector or yes, northern is it outside northern sector? Northern savanna. That's what the law says. The northern savanna. And I've summarized it to be the three northern regions. So anywhere outside the three northern region. Are we all good? Are we all okay? Can we move? Can we move? Can we move? Can we move? I hope by now you are done. Yes. Okay, okay what's the... Yes. What's the third locational incentive? It's ten percent. Young entrepreneur. I told you who is a young entrepreneur. The law says what? Someone who is less than what? Someone who is up to fifty-five years. An entrepreneurship. <laughs> So these younger young entrepreneurs, when they go into businesses like energy, 
IT, okay, um, horticultural plants, manufacturing, agriculture, okay, tourism. Okay, this, when somebody is a young entrepreneur and he goes into these industries, right, the law allows him to first, are you getting it? Five years from the year of commencement, are you getting it? Exempt from tax. Okay, this one is complete exemption. Complete exemption. It doesn't pay any tax at all. And two, for the five, five years after, let's say after that, right, if he starts making profit, he can carry forward losses, right? So carry forward of losses. So for the next five years, he can carry forward losses, right? And during that five years itself, if he locates in any of these areas, right? If he's in Tema and Accra, Tema or Accra, he's going to pay tax at 15%. If he's located in regional capitals, okay, in any regional capital, he pays tax at 12.5%. If he locates elsewhere, okay, he pays tax at 10%. And if he's in what? The three northern regions, this young entrepreneur will pay tax at 5%. Are we okay? And this one exists also for the next five years. Understood? Uh, please, I need clarification. Sure. Yeah. And you, are, uh, you said they are exempt from tax. So why would they be paying tax at, at this rate? Paying after the concession period. Okay. So the thing is, if you are making profits, you pay tax at this rate. But if you are not making profit, then you can carry for the, forward the losses also for five years. So that's the rule. Makes sense. My bosses, are you okay? Yes, sir. So that's fine. So, boss, but these rates apply only within the five years uh, after the Initial yes. five years. Yes. It applies okay. after five years. After five years, he comes back to the normal 25%. Because after five years, guy, you wouldn't have been a 35-year-old again. <laughs> you wouldn't have been a younger. Yes. Please. Um, so with the... With the let's see, someone is thirty three years and he starts something. Once he started before he was thirty five, he will enjoy it for five years, right? Yes, he will enjoy it for five years. Even if you were thirty four, you still enjoy it for five years. Even if you are twenty one, you still enjoy it for only five years. Now only five years this thing exists for. After five years, you don't get to enjoy it again. So it could even be a period of 10 years for you because for the first five years, no tax. For the next five years, these are the rates. After this, it's gone. You don't enjoy again. Not so. So they are just pushing people. That so, Boss Bill, when he started a business, assuming he's 37 years, the first five years, he's going to enjoy the holiday. He was 37. He doesn't qualify. And that... It should be less than 35 years to qualify, even for oh, okay. Uh -huh. So once you qualify, your age changes. There is a different case because that one there, so far as years pass, you age. So if you started 34, by the time you finish enjoying all this, you should have been 44, right? <laughs> okay. Okay, so any questions so far? Are we all on point? Can we go? Can we go? Yes. What's the fourth one?
What free about zones. the free zone? If you locate free, free zones, free, yeah. either as a free zone enterprise or a free zone developer, okay, then there are some rules that you need to follow, but there are also some incentives that you are going to enjoy, mostly in the exam for free zones, unless you are doing ethics. Okay, free zones, mostly they are just going to ask you about the incentives you are going to enjoy as a free zone enterprise or free zone developer, right? And in free zones, there's so many incentives. There are monetary or monetary and non-monetary incentives that you have to consider in the aspect of free zones, okay? So what benefits do licensed free zone companies get, right? So we have monetary incentives and non-monetary incentives. For monetary incentives, I get an it. If you are into free you have an percent exemption from the payment of duties. Okay, so you do not pay duties. No duties. Also, you cannot pay income tax. You do not pay income tax on your profits for 10 years. Okay. And if you are in a free zone, export, complete export free zone, after the 10 years, you will pay tax of 15%. So first of all, you exempt from paying duties. You exempt from tax for 10 years. And then after the 10 year period, if you are into export, you pay 15% tax. Okay. You have total exemption from withholding tax or dividend. And you have double taxation relief. Okay. If only the country, the, the foreign investor is coming from has a DTA with Ghana. How many monetary incentives have I given you? How many have I given you? How many tax incentives have I given you? Four. Are you sure it's four? Mention. Why four? Mention them. Okay, the first one is free 100% exemption from payment of direct tax, indirect taxes, and levies on the imports. Yes. Exemption. And then we have... Then I told you income tax for 10 years, right? Income tax exemption. Okay. For 10 years. Then post-concession, not so, post-concession rate of 15%, right? If you are into export, okay. right? Then we say what? Exemption from dividend withholding. Also, exemption from dividend withholding tax. Then finally, DTA relief. Also, where there's a DTA, where the country the investor is coming from. Please have you put it down. That's the summary. Put it down. Are you done? Yes, sir. Okay. okay. Now let's look at the non-monetary incentives. So free zones have some non-monetary incentives. Like they do not have any import license requirement. They are minimal custom formalities because they are outside the custom trading zone. And then uh, an investor can own 100% of the shares, whether it's a local or it's a foreign national. There are no conditions, so there's no restriction on the repatriation of profits for free zone companies to their head office or to another country. Okay, so for a lot of countries, you cannot, you cannot repatriate profits. There'll be limitation. Maybe you can only repatriate 15% in the first year. But Ghana, you can repatriate or send all your profits to your country, right? Also, prison investors can operate foreign currency accounts in Ghana. Some countries you cannot. You can only look, use local, uh, local accounts. And also, at least 70% of your annual production must be exported. I get in it. And 30% can be sold in the local market. So prison companies are also guaranteed against what we call expropriation. Government cannot take your what? Your properties. Okay. So no nationalization, no expo uh, expropriation. And there, there are guarantees against what? Uh, uh, expropriation, right? So government cannot just come and take your properties like they do in other countries. And also there's amicable dispute settling procedure. So if there's any dispute between a free zone enterprise or developer and any government body, the free zones board, are you getting it, can settle the dispute, create the consensus or compromise easily to settle this, okay? So these are the incentives that free zone companies enjoy.
So if you locate yourself in the free zones, you enjoy these ones. Do you understand? So you see locational incentives are not bad. That's why I've grouped all of them. So how many locational incentives have we seen? Uh -huh. How many did we see? We saw four. Hey. Mm -hmm. W. <laughs> is it that you? <laughs> uh, it's one, two, it's six. six. I mentioned them for me. Sebu, yeah, yeah. We should put them both monetary and non-monetary together. Yes, of course, you have to put them together. Um, uh, in exam, don't separate them into monetary and non-monetary. You can mix them up. They are set all. Uh, oh, okay. You have to mix everything up. I mean the overall locational incentives that we saw, not for free zones alone. No. I'm saying all of them. The categories of locational incentive, how many? There is plenty. The category is four. It's four, right? It's four. It's four. The category is four, yes. And what four. are the four? That's what I'm asking. What are the four? Well, we have the manufacturing. We have, we have the have free the zone. Yeah, young entrepreneur. Young entrepreneur and then the free zones. Okay. So we had manufacturing post concession, right? After the concession, free zones. Yes. And the young entrepreneur. Nice. Okay. Now, we have moved from. Hello. Yes, boss. Oscar. Please, what is the difference between the free zones as an enterprise and then developer? Is there any difference? Yeah, there's a difference. We will come okay. and when we are treat, we will treat free zone as free zone, right? Everything like the licensing requirement, the role of okay. the free zones board. This one is just the incentive part, right? That's why I don't want to confuse you by going deeper. But we have people okay, that's right. who who set up, right, to manufacture in free zones and people who set up other free zone firms, right? So you should get the difference. Okay. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. So as part of the nature of your company, right, or the nature of the entity you are dealing in, you get some tax, reduced tax rates. For instance, if I want to operate any normal company, I pay 25%, right, whether I'm listed or I'm not listed. Before 2021, all and all listed companies used to pay taxes at 22%. But now, if you are listed, you pay 25, not 22 anymore. If you are trust, you pay tax at 25%. If you are a free zone company, so far as you are into export, free zones, you know, I told you 70% export, right? 30%. So on exports of free zones, you pay 15%. If you are into petroleum and mining, you pay 35%. You see, the nature of a hotel industry make you pay what you see because of the activity you are paying tax at 22 which means you are saving about three percent of the normal corporate tax rate do you understand and when you export non-traditional goods you pay tax at what eight percent do you all follow so if you export any other goods other than timber lumber and logs cocoa beans right are you following then they are all non-traditional goods yeah tax at 8%. Now, if you are a bank that gives loan to farming enterprises that use that loan in the production of their income, you pay tax at 20%. If you are a bank that also gives loans to leasing companies for granting leases to other people, you pay tax at 20%. Okay? So this is telling us that because of the nature of some activities that you do, you end up with lower tax rates. I hope that is okay. Do you have some of the rates? Do you have some of the rates now? Are we okay? Will you remember the rates? Can we move yes. to tax holidays? Can we move to the tax holidays? Can we move to the tax holidays? Yes. So these are what we call the industry concessions, right? Or the temporary concessions. They are temporary because they only exist for some period, right? So we are saying that let's start with agriculture or farming. So if you are into farming, right, we are looking at the sector. So if the sector is agriculture or farming, okay, when you farm tree crops, when we talk about tree crops, tree crop include things like what? Um, coconut, coffee, oil, palm, share butter, share nut. Are you getting it? 
hmm, crops that are trees that we harvest from, right? And you see, they take a long time before we can harvest from them. So if you are into tree crop farming for the first 10 years, from the date you make your first harvest, I get it. I get it. You pay 5% tax. So during that period before, when these concessions came in the old act, there were no taxes. It was complete exemption. But it, it was amended after the, uh, the Internal Revenue uh, Act was amended. It came to 1%, right? You were now paying 1%. Now, from June 2023, it became 5%. It means that if you are farming free crop, 10 years from the period of your first harvest, you are going to be paying 5% tax, right? If you are into cattle rearing, if you rear cattle, it's also 10 years, okay? What? First harvest, we have a cattle. <laughs> From commencement, right? We don't have a scatter, right? From period of commencement. Please, are we all following? From the day you started your business, for the first 10 years, you pay tax of 5%. If you're into cash crop, cash crop is anything other than a tree crop. Okay, mango. Uh, mango is a tree crop. So rice, succum, like, uh, cassava, all those other things are all cash crops. So cash crops, you for the first five years from commencement. If you're into fish farming, five years, 5%. Five if you're into cocoa farming, the income from cocoa alone is exempt from tax. Please remember this. The income from cocoa of a cocoa farmer is exempt from tax. So these are the agriculture. So anytime you farm livestock, any livestock other than cattle, it's five years, but cattle is 10 years, tree crop, 10 years, right? Cash crop, five years. Cocoa farming, exempt from tax. Please, are we okay? So do we have the yes. concession for agriculture? Can we move to processing businesses? Can we move for processing businesses? Can we move yes. to businesses? Okay, fine. So let's go to processing. The first processing business we'll look at is agro-processing. For agro-processing businesses, I told you agro-processing involves businesses that, that convert what? Uh, agricultural goods into finished or semi-finished semi product, semi products. So sometimes agro-processing and manufacturing are different. depends on which one you apply for. But remember, if you apply as an agro-processing for manufacturing incentive, it means you cannot enjoy the post-concession one. Remember. So it's either of the two. So you can choose one. So agro-processing, for five years from the period you commence business, I get it, in which commercial production begins. So when you begin commercial production, five years from that date, you only pay 5% tax. After, you pay, what, 25%. But even that period, when you locate in those areas, the post-concession one applies to you. Do you remember? Accra and Tema, 20, regional capital, 15, elsewhere, 10, the three northern regions, 5%. Do you remember? Okay. Yes. Now, when you are into cocoa byproduct business, which is also I uh, agro processing, cocoa byproducts is businesses who use substandard cocoa beans, cocoa ask, and the cocoa skin to make products like the Alata Semina. I get to the ones that use the cocoa to make the cocoa beans and then the cocoa skin to make medicine. They are all cocoa byproduct businesses. They are also like agro processing because they are processing the cocoa into something else, right? So just like agro processing. They are five percent tax for the first five years from the period the business commences. Okay, then when it comes to waste processing, if you are into waste processing, those who make biogas, those who process waste into other forms of uh, energy, are you getting it? Those ones for the first seven years, are you getting it? When the business is established, they are going to pay five percent tax. Are we okay? Then we come to the business of banking. For banking, rural banking, for the first ten years from the period where the business commences, they also pay 5%. So rural banking, 10 years, 5% from commencement. Then real estate, if only you are certified by the Ministry of Works and Housing to do low-cost housing, right? You pay 5%, not 1%. You pay 5% for the first five years, okay? And then when you are into venture capital and approved unit trust schemes, it's 10 years for the period where you commence the operations. Okay, so these are the only temporary concessions that we have for these sectors. However, the automobile de development program has also brought some new incentives for companies that are into vehicle manufacturing, right? So 
registered manufacturers and assemblers of automobiles. So according to the Income Tax Amendment 2019 at 1007, the state schedule has now been amended to provide tax concessions or exemptions on the income of registered manufacturers and assemblers of automobiles vehicles under the Ghana Automobile Development Program. Furthermore, these manufacturers and assemblers under the program have VAT exemptions on imported plants under the Value Added Tax Amendment Act 2019 at 1005. Okay, so we are saying that you can have people who either assemble or manufacture semi knockdown vehicles, okay, and those who deal with completely knockdown vehicles, right? Now, for semi knockdown vehicles, partially knockdown vehicles, these people enjoy three years exemption. It's a complete exemption. This tax holiday, you don't pay 1%. That's why I've separated it. I didn't add it to the other one. Complete exemption. So for the first three years when you commence business, right? Three years from when you commence, you're completely exempt from tax. And if the vehicles are completely knocked down, completely knocked down, that you are now coming to put things on it and make it a full vehicle, it's 10 years from the date you commence business. But however, if you were doing semi-knockdown and now you come and do completely knockdown, it's a cumulative what, exemption, right? Three years to 10 years. So you're not 13 years, but rather 10. You enjoy 10 overall. So if you enjoy your three years, you only come and enjoy additional seven, not 10 years to make it 13, right? So it's a sort of, sort of anti-avoidance to stop people from enjoying from three to 10, right? So three, you just add seven. And also when you import plant and equipment for the knockdown uh, activity, those plants and equipment will be exempt from VAT upon importation. Are we okay? I hope this one is easier to remember in case it pops up in a question too easy. Three years semi knockdown, 10 years what completely knocked down. The knockdown equipment that you, you import or machinery are completely exempt from VAT. Even if this law was not passed, this, this plant and machinery that was imported will still be exempt from VAT. If you visit uh, the first schedule of the VAT Act, paragraph 16, it tells us that when you import machinery for manufacturing, this is also as some sort of manufacturing, right? It will still be exempt from VAT anyway. So whether this was passed or not passed, it would have been still exempt, provided we comply with that section of the law. Okay, then. So, Hello, Bill. Yes, boss. Is this semi knockdown and uh, completely knocked down? This technology, what do they mean? Is that this semi knockdown? The, the uh, technology starts to semi knockdown and completely knock down. Mm -hmm. what, what does it really mean? Uh, I have to show you big, uh, how they look like, right? So the best thing is to visit and see what they look like. You understand? So these are semi knocked yeah. up. You can see. Yes. So these are semi knocked down vehicles. They are a motor friend accident car. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. But when we talk about completely knocked down vehicles, it is not a, like yeah, she she, Do you understand? You see, this one is semi knocked down. So you see bits and pieces of the car already arranged. The completely knocked down ones, the part, uh -huh, this one sort of looks like completely knocked down. Can you see this this image? Okay. Everything is scattered. You are now come to rearrange everything. Like you are now come to rearrange everything. But this one, some parts have been arranged already. Oscar, oh, okay. Is now. Is it understood now? Yes, please. Is everybody okay? Is everybody okay now? Sebu. Yes, boss. Um, please uh, explain the the issue of the three the three years and the ten years. No, where we have seven years. So, if somebody was working as a semi knockdown vehicle assembler or manufacturer, right, and then now okay. switch to completely knockdown, he you know completely knockdown is ten years exemption, right? And then the three years is for semi knockdown. It means that you cannot enjoy the three years and convert to complete and come and enjoy 10 years. You only enjoy the additional seven years. Do you get it now? Oh, okay. Uh -huh. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. 
question answered? Yes. Okay, so the last one we'll look at here is the exemption for private universities, okay? Now, private universities who plow back 100% of their earnings are exempt from corporate income tax. So if you're a private university and you what? You plow back 100% of your earnings from business. It's completely exempt from corporate income tax. And to enjoy this exemption, you must, you can enjoy if only we can give evidence to the Commissioner General that we have what? We have plowed back the 100% of our reinvestment are you getting into the business? If evidence can be given to the commissioner, then you can enjoy this complete exemption, okay, for private universities. Are you okay? Are we okay? Yes, sir. Okay, there's an incentive which is not in any law, but is subject to a grant of this incentive by parliament or by the Ministry of Finance, right? That is tax and business incentive under the one district, one factory. So under one district, one factory, if you apply, the Ministry of Finance will give you this exemption, okay? So you have corporate tax incentives where you have five-year tax holiday, I guess, which can be renewed when the Minister of Finance applies. And also when you bring any equipment and all that, they can waive the import duties for you. It's not everybody that gets the same exemption so for one district, one factory, but these are the general ones. Some people get more, depending on how much you are investing, okay? Are we okay? And you have complete exemption from import duties. You are you have relief from what withholding taxes, relief from double taxation, like what we saw in the free zones, right? It's still the same thing for both foreign and local employees. Then we have guarantees and repatriation of dividends. You can repatriate dividends just like you get in the free zones, right? So if you have with this one, it's not just like the free zones, but they still they are. They have guarantees against national nationalization of their properties and expropriation, right? But for one district, one factory companies, you have hundred percent foreign companies can own. I get it, hundred percent of the companies, right? If they have seven hundred thousand and they can employ four expatriate workers, but you can get what, um, hundred percent. I get it, ownership between five hundred thousand and what, uh, seven hundred thousand US dollars. I get when you when you employ three expatriate workers. Okay, so these are incentives that you can also when they go and borrow, sometimes the government gives them what some uh, benefit onto the interest rate. So they do not pay the normal Bank of Ghana interest rate. So if it is 20%, are you getting it? A Bank of Ghana policy rate is 26%, they will pay 20%, right? And then the minimum interest is 10%. Are we okay? So that is how they are. Then they are also covered under risk. Okay, there's a guarantee for insurance for them. Okay, they are covered in case they lose, they can be rehabilitated or reinvested. So that's one district, one factory. Sometimes they just pop it in one or two questions. You just have to know. If you forget it, remember free zones. If you use it, they'll still mark it for you. It's the same, it's literally the same incentives. Okay, so. That brought us to the end of our session today. I hope it wasn't a bad session. Just that people didn't interact a lot. I don't like my class like that too. I want everyone to speak. Okay.